All right, the Detroit Lions made their final cuts. They're down to 53 men. Um, not a ton of surprises. Johnny Tavai did end up getting cut. Um, it was time. Lions cut both their kickers. I mean, Joy, got, you're the resident expert as, as far as this goes. I mean, you know, and, and look, I see them working, and we, we have a tweet from our, our own Corey Woods who's out there covering Lions practice. You want a good follow on Twitter, follow at Corey Woods with a K. He's out there doing a lot of work. Man, he's grinding. Yeah, grinding. he, he you is. You know what, man? He's hardest. I mean, hardest worker in show biz, right he, he, there. I mean, I don't know how he is. does it. But there, there's a list, the release, the waived. And, Joy, I guess I'll start right there. Break it down for me, released versus waived. You know, I had a couple people ask about that. What, what's the difference on that? Um, well, same. Same, right? <laughs> same. <laughs> same no, thing. I, these I, think, guys... I think so what happens, so, uh, so when you're waived, right, so you get released, you get waived. What happens is a team has 24 hours, right? A team has 24 hours. Uh, this is the rules when I play. They have 24 hours to claim your contract. And so when that 24 hours is over, if no one's claimed your contract, like another team, so um, they can re-sign you to the practice squad. So a lot of those guys you see that may be cut, that's our young players, they might come back as practice squad players. Right. And if, if you look at it, what they did structurally, as far as what the Lions did structurally, Darren, there there is an emphasis on young talent. They have a ton of guys that are 24 years old or younger. And... I, let me let me qualify this. And yesterday, you guys heard me kind of erupt on, on the whole status of this roster. I did exclude the current regime from that, despite what some people wanted to hear. They might not have heard it that way. But with that being said, I feel a lot better today than I did yesterday because the direction is very, very clear as to what they are doing. And, and I went ahead and looked at their salary table into the future. And 2023, once we get through 2023... That's going to be the, the year of delineation for me. That's when Trey Flowers comes off the books. That's when Jared Goff comes off the books. Any huge contract commitments will be gone. And, oh, by the way, that's when they'll have their multiple first-round picks. So it, what made me melt down yesterday about this bleak look on this roster is almost making me more calm here today because the storm is coming. And, Darren, I go to you for this because – you and I talked about this in the past with the Franz Nielsen thing. There are a lot of similarities with this Lions roster with where this Red Wings roster is, and that process is looking very similar to me. There's some contracts on those books that you can't do anything about. Vitae is another one. He's very, very cuttable in 2023. You, you just have to weather the storm. There's no other alternative. The, br the brilliance, says Neil, is yesterday you, you purged and cleansed yourself yeah, to, now be able to, to be able to start over because you're looking. And what does that say? There's a plan in place. And then I revert back to our football expert on the panel that I remember him saying two years of, you know, we're going to see how it happens. They got us, you know, th this regime's got a two-year window. And so that plays into when in football how things can change quicker. But in order to move forward, sometimes you got to tear it all down. So what you're telling me, Neil, is uh, it, the mold. Yesterday we used it as the house. We got into the basement. There was mold. There was everything. So pretty much today, Balfour came in. Structurally, everything's sound. The environmental is sound. Everything's cleaned up. You're ready to build the house, Ready right? to build the house, Joey. I like it. Yeah. Foundation is good. Uh, <laughs> there's a couple surprises, though. Um, you know, with Mike Ford, I didn't know I didn't know what was going to happen with Mike Ford, um, but I guess they like Price upside. Um, you know, he's a good he was a good gunner, um, but a good special teams player, and so they end up bringing him back. Uh, and I think they like his upside for him being able to go from safety down to cornerback. So I, I'm not mad at uh, like I said, I'm not mad at the at the lineup. I'm not mad at our 53. Like I said, let's see how it goes. Let's build off this year. Yeah, let's well, be I mean positive. let's stay positive. And and I and I am now look both things can be true. I am positive about the structure of and the roster critical. And, and critical. critical at the same time. Again, current regime excluded. But the the only thing that this regime has done to me that I I didn't necessarily agree with. But I mean, who am I? I'm just a dude with a microphone. But they do give me a check, so I'll give you an opinion. You know, that's how it works. <laughs> but you know, I I don't like the restructuring, the adding the year of Goff's contract. But whatever. I mean. Yeah, okay. Some money. That that that's that's what they did. You know, that's what they did. I just I want the commitments to be over. I'm a, I'm a guy that's huge. Again, on that 2023 year, golf's off the books. Trey Flowers off the books. Vitai, very very attractively cuttable, because he, I mean he's a 20 million dollar cap hit right now. There's 
He's on the roster. You always talk about a numbers game, Joyke. He's here. Game. That's just the way it is. Yeah. So you got to deal with that. But the 2023, Joyke, I'm, I'm planning my flag. Once we get through the 2023 season, I, I that that's when that's when I think you can really judge so, this administration. Okay, so I'm asking you right now because you're giving them a pass right now. I am. Now you're giving them a pass on their record, or yes, that's it. Yeah. So what do you want to see out of the Lions this year? Like, I know what I want to see. Like, what do you want to see out of the Lions the this year? Real like, talk? Me, like, what do you want to see? Like, for me, you say I want to see, you know, the hit. This is first time coaching a full season. I wanted to see how he manages the the, the clock. Uh, the, yeah. Right, manages the, the, the clock, the play call, calling. Um, that's what I want to see from him. I want to see from Jared Goff. I want to see how he manages the game, the the decision he makes, the the chances he takes downfield. Because he's going to take chances. We I want that. But I want to see at what points – uh, at what what part of the game will he be taking these chances in? And so that's what I want to see. I, I don't really care too much for the record, but I want to be able to sit back and say, okay, we are improved um, with our defense just off better play calling. We are improved on our offense off of better play calling. And so I want to see. Yeah, and you probably won't like my answer, because, but I've always had held firm with this. In the second you can't make the playoffs, the only thing that matters is your draft status. The second, and, and I get it. These guys are pros. You're a pro. You, you were a pro. You're out there playing for your money, for your food on your table. You're playing out there for your job, and I get that. And I'm not, I'll, I'll never say the word tank because I'm not going to ask you to go out there and tank. I'm not going to ask you to go out there and tank because this is your profession. It's what you do. No, no that's never in our minds. But the, but the facts are, once you can't make the playoffs... The more games you lose, the better off the organization is. That is a fact. I mean, it's a mathematical but then fact. But doesn't that come down to Cutting coaching and scheme and using players Absolutely. differently and stuff? For me, uh, right, absolutely. three things. Progress every game, right? The effort, the 60-minute effort, which exudes the attitude of your coach, and intelligence. And what do I mean by intelligence? Pre, no pre-stop penalties. How do you manage a two-minute clock? How does it look, you know, do you get better, make the adjustments at halftime? Do I see progress moving game to game by different players? Do I see if they're using different guys, um, the, the offensive line? But, you know, offensive, defensive line is, is I guess, going to get the heat of it. And then you look at, like, can a Quora come back? And uh, it, just d- different things like that. Akuda, uh you know, that, that's who, a big one. You know, that's that's a big one. Does Swift stay healthy? So there's a lot of different things looking. To me, it's not wins or losses. Yeah. That'll figure itself out. It's attitude and uh, with foundation, it's how do you go out and play? And are you smart? And yeah. then it's hockey intelligence beyond 1 to 20 in the Red Wing locker room during our cup wins. Was in, that's what Scotty demanded. You're all superior intelligent, your hockey IQ, right? We don't have that to you know 53 man we got to learn that but it's something that you yeah. can build and learn it's the it's the death right and that's one thing that kind of uh but there is uh, there's not a lot of depth on it's, this it's team not because there's not, not a lot of high level talent the, either right that's what i'm saying and so you gotta also have to think that if we were to have an injury at a certain position at a key position say our sex say jeff goes now uh akuda goes now then understand we're going to that that corner who comes in takes the spot is going to be attacked. They're going to attack that guy. Right. And so, you know, somebody goes down at, at, at the D line. You know, we don't have depth there. Somebody goes down on the offensive line. You know, we, we need depth and we don't. That's something that we don't have. And so going through this season, I don't want to judge it off, off of our talent. I want to judge it off of our coaching and what plays are we calling. And, and Joy, I think you and I are in lockstep with that because there's really nothing else you can do because this roster is so bare that you can't judge it off the talent. They've had one draft. And they and and not only that, they haven't been they haven't put themselves in a position yet because they can't because of the math. They're not going to be prime players in free agency. I understand that. I get that. So, yeah, they, they they've got a free ride for 2 years on me. They do because I I've circled that 2023 year when this roster financial financially wise becomes a lot more manageable. You have your multiple first-round draft picks that will be in the fold at that point. The foundation is very good. I mean, DMAC, you talked about it. We've stripped the house. We, we've knocked down everything. We've poured the cement now for the foundation, and the cement is dry. So here we go. And with all that being said, this year what I'm looking for is a top-five draft pick. I mean, let's, let's just be real about it because no one's going to sit here and say, well, this is a playoff football team or I'm anything like this. that. I'm going to tell you this. I want us to have 
a bad season, and I also want the Rams to have a bad season. I was just going to say, I, I could you imagine Rams. getting our top five pick from the Rams? Yeah. Oh. Absolutely. Can, can, can you imagine us having two first-round picks in the top ten? Can you imagine that? Hold can you imagine on. Hold that? on. Hold up. <laughs> what, what did my boy used to do here? Yeah. Oh, looking in the glass. We, we, we might, have, we might have to go to Mass Land for that one. Yeah. Yeah. Looking to the magic glass. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Yeah, I mean, but that's that's where it is. And again, going back to that discussion, this seemed to make a lot of people uncomfortable that were in our YouTube chat thread and social media and stuff like that. You need the Rams to have a bad season, which ultimately means Matt Stafford will have a bad season. But as I said before, he's gone, and he ain't coming back. So that's that's it, man. I, I'm about the I'm Detroit t- Lions. I'm saying, t- no, him. he's not coming back, but we are going there. Yeah, yeah, no yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, and, sure. and yeah, the bottom know, line you maybe know, they can tie that. Oh no, maybe they can tie that game. Yeah, right. The bottom line is though, as you look at rosters throughout throughout everybody except because of Al- Avila with the Tigers, but you look at what Troy Weaver did. He came in and gutted that roster and got you know that's his team. You look at Steve Eiserman. He's wading through bad Kenny Holland contract. I think Dan Kaiser's still on. On the books, but it's Steve Eisenman's team. The same thing with Brad Holmes. It takes time, but in two years, you see the light. You're not hooked in. You see the light right. and let them build. So Yeah, and, and I again, I think the Lions and the Red Wings are in a very, very similar spot in that I, I've given you guys my feelings, Darren. I've given you my feelings on that. Some of the contracts that were on the books, that continue to be on the books for the Red Wings, are they're hurtful. They are. I mean, they hurt your progression. All you can do with that is just let the time run. And, and you got to wait your turn. You do. I understand that. But the meltdown yesterday was more about the events leading up to today. And now today's here. And believe it or not, strangely, I feel calm. I understand what they were doing. I understand where they're coming from. I think it's a breakthrough. I really do. I think this is a, a, a breakthrough. And, and the DMAC, you know, therapy couch was good. Well, why, Joy, is you gave clap, me, why is Fish clapping his hands in there? No, I was clapping my yeah. hands. No, Fish is clapping too. Joyke, you gave me Good some job, tough Fish. love yesterday, no, and I'm thankful for that. Yeah, it's all love. Yeah. It's-